The National Kidney Foundation estimates that about 67,000 people in the United States die of kidney failure every year. Many depend upon dialysis treatment to keep them going. Next week, our sister station, KTEH, airs Detour, a film about a local musician who finds he needs a kidney transplant, just as his band, Rogue Wave, is making, its, making it big. So joining me is the filmmaker, Jim Granato, and Paul Sturgeon, the subject of the film. Um, first of all, Pat, <laughs> tell me, um, uh, with your medical condition being what it was, why did you decide to even try this? It was really the only thing that would keep my mind off of my medical issue. I mean, I had to do dialysis twice a day, but uh, keeping myself busy with, with the band, and with playing music, really helped me get through, through all of that. And you, did you ever think about the fact that there was a lot of danger in your trying it? Yeah, of course you did. <laughs> yeah, I did. I thought about that because being a touring band, we are playing in, in clubs, and that's um, not exactly a uh, clean environment all the time, mm -hmm. preferably sterile environment, which I don't even know if the hospital provides a sterile environment. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I had some challenges there, and also the challenge was how to keep my, my diet in check. I had dietary restrictions, low sodium, low potassium, uh, low protein even, um, had to limit my water, my, my fluid intake. So it's a challenge to travel, as you can imagine. You're always eating out. Uh, every meal and being in a band I have to go to bed later than everybody because I did dialysis in the evening and I did it in the morning so I'd go to bed later and get up earlier than everybody then pile in the van and go to the next show. So, so why did you decide to try and document all of this? It was really because of my friendship with Pat. I mean, Pat just called me up one day and, you know, after finding out the news that he was returning to dialysis, wanted to know if I wanted to document something about it. Um, and the truth of it is, 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 you know, in the beginning, we, we had no idea of the story to come, of course. It was really a simple idea about a video um, just sort of raising awareness about this particular type of dialysis. You know, Pat had been through this before with the previous transplant. He really wanted to do something to show other people that were going to go on dialysis, perhaps for the first time, give them some reassurance that right. there is some mobility involved. And well, the important thing here is the film, and we do have a clip from that film, and so yeah. why don't we take a look at it, and then you guys can tell us more about what went on. Great. Being in a touring band, being you know in a in a band like ours, we're a wave that's that's that is starting to to. I guess, for lack of a better term, take off a little bit. It's the greatest time ever, driving endless miles and unpacking a van and playing and then packing it up, being the last person out of a place and going to bed late and getting up early. And then start over. So you're always kind of on the edge of not really sleeping because you're always, you know, I mean, it's not like I'm complaining. It's just kind of like, how do you go to bed very late and you have to get up early because you got to get to the next place. When you think about it and you break it down molecularly, <laughs> Uh, it seems really dumb to want to do that. There's something about playing music that, and, and traveling with your friends and making new friends and getting to see them repeatedly in different places and going to places. It's the, the best time. I love it. Now, doing that on dialysis. Wait, you want to tour on dialysis? That doesn't sound like a very good idea. We had long discussions about that, that that just seemed like a bad idea. We would have meetings before practice. We'd sit in our little lobby of our studio and talk about and write down all the details. And he would say, I was at the doctor today. This is what he said. This is what I can do. <laughs> do dialysis in the van while we're driving. It's crazy. My reaction was, you're crazy. If you think you want to go on the road and do this and you have dietary restrictions, which are like ridiculous to me. Was there ever a moment when you wondered, what are we doing? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, truly in the beginning, I mean, well, through the whole process for me, I mean, Pat and these guys are my friends first, subjects second. So certainly I was concerned. But, um, I, you know, I have to say that Pat, you know, knowing him for a long time and how much music means to him, and, you know, despite the conflicts involved, I mean, he was going to make this work. Yeah. And it was interesting. Pat, how did the other band members react? Uh, what, what was your relationship with them? 
Well, <clears throat> they reacted quite like that clip um, <laughs> uh, in colorful language, uh, but they thought it was uh, really risky to do this, and it, it potentially was. Um, everyone, family members, my girlfriend, everybody thought I should stay home and take care of myself, which might have been the better idea. But I had done this dialysis before, and I knew uh, what it entailed, and I, uh, I felt like uh, I felt pretty confident that I could do this. You, you play the drums. That's yeah. a lot of physical uh, yeah. strength you need to do that. Mm -hmm. Were there days when you too lost a little faith, or were there days that were so high and so enjoyable that mm -hmm. made it made it all seem worthwhile to you? It seemed like it was all really enjoyable and it really helped me, uh, like I said before, helped me <clears throat> really persevere. But uh, there were some times, and this is. Uh, there were some times when I'd have se severe headaches, um, just things that were keeping me from performing at my my peak. Uh, but it was overall, it was the best thing I could do for myself. What were the moments for you when you felt that we've got it, we're doing the right thing, and this is going to work? You know, it, it was a uh, three-year process to make this film. Um, it covers two years in the life of Pat. And there was a lot of waiting in between, certainly. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a huge twist in the film that we did not, uh, we did not intend, and, and I'm purposely being vague here about it, but really, you know, just to kind of go through this process as far as we could take it. Um, you know, I will say that Pat, you know, we, we didn't think there would be a lot of drama involved. We thought he was going to get his kidney rather quick, and mm -hmm. things just didn't start to work out. So, I mean, he's here. He, he did get it. Um, but how we got it, how we got there is pretty remarkable. What do you want people to walk away from with the, when they look at this documentary? W what do you think the big message is there? My initial response is, is to that question is uh, the, need, the need for donation. The need for people to sign up their uh, sign on their driver's license or go to the national registry, the donatelife.org, and uh, talk with their family members and make their wishes known that uh, they want to donate their their organs when they pass, if if that happens to them. Well, thank you both, Pat and Jim, thank very you. much. Thank you. Detour airs on KTEH as part of the independent film series on Wednesday, November the 11th at 10 p.m. It will air on KQED on January 7th and on KQED World January 10th.